fact, the French philosopher, Pascal, I like this very much, he once said, all of men's difficulties, I mean, those days they used to say men anyway, they also mean women. All of men's difficulties are caused by his inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. You understand? All of men's difficulties are caused by his inability to sit quietly in a room by himself. Trouble with us in the modern world, we do too much. We speak far too much. We think too much. And we don't have time loss. In fact, sometimes I think it's very interesting in the modern world that, you know, sign of success is that I'm very busy. I'm busy. I don't have time. I'm always, you know. Actually, it's not success. It's failure. Real success is you have leisure. Most important is you have time for yourself and spend well. And what we've done, we're doing, 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 we, but we've, we've forgotten how to be with ourselves. And we've lost the sense of being. In fact, I always tell my students, we are scattered everywhere and nobody's at home. We miss ourselves. We always look externally for all stimulations, you know? But to remain with ourselves alone, you become lonely, you become, you know, you fill your life. You see, there are two things, loneliness and aloneness. Aloneness is like the solitude that is wonderful, That that great meditators, yogis, hermits have that, which brings such profound peace, you know, that aloneness. That we, we have not found, we have not, we've not come to terms with ourselves. In fact, I always say, you see, I told the people, you know, if you're afraid of dying, I tell them, don't worry, you will all die successfully. <laughs> so then, why are we afraid of dying? Because when you die, that's the moment of truth. We need to face ourselves. Fear of death is not looking at us. That's why the, among the Christian contemporaries, there's a memento mori. Remember that you have to die. If you remember that we must die, we must then realize what life is. In fact, death is like a mirror in which the true meaning of life is reflected. Death is one of the greatest teachers. In fact, in the Christianity and Buddhist contemplative monks, one of the most important focal point practitioners is about meditating on empty, uh, meditating on impermanence and death. In fact, meditating on impermanence or death is like similar to meditating on God. So meditation is bringing the mind home. Meditation is the process of coming to no one's mind. In fact, there are so many meditation these days. But on a deeper level, meditation is coming to no one's nature of mind. On a begin level, the essence of meditation is the state of non-distraction. And at the beginning, meditation is about stabilizing the mind through the practice. You see, meditation is good for stabilizing because in the unstable world, stability 
it really it can bring. See, the most important thing is to be open. Okay, can you try to now sit a little bit, practice with me? If you wish. Be, most important, be spacious. Body, a great mass of body on your seat. Mind your body, mind your body, body in relaxation. To be open, spacious. In fact, the main point, the ultimate point, is to go beyond the ordinary mind into the state of transcendence, into the scarlet nature mind. The amazing thing is, while still being in this world, we can elevate our mind to that state where we can see things, view things, with our awareness in a very special way, we have the awareness of awareness, that even when we have anger, even negative emotions come, if we have the awareness of awareness, anger can rise, but we will not act. You understand? I think the main thing I wanted to share with you is that the main thing is the Bring your mind to a different level. In fact, drop your mind. Trouble with us, we don't leave mind alone. We're always thinking, thinking, thinking. Leave your mind alone. It's a bit like people who know how to... I, I don't know how to ride that bicycle, so I'm fascinated with people who know how to ride bicycles. People know how to ride bicycles. I tried to ride, I fell down many times. Now I don't even try. I passed it. But now, whereas those people who know how to ride bicycles, the moment they get on the bicycle, they don't have to think about the balance, isn't it? They have the balance in them. That's the thing. Main thing of meditation is the balance of the mind. The equipoise. It's called Nyamya in Tibetan. Equipoise. Kenshin Bajori used to say, Simmajibanyambariya. Leave your mind unaltered in the state of equipoise. Equipoise. Where you leave your mind unaltered, meaning without any manipulation or contrivance. Live in its own natural state. More and more you leave your mind in natural state, more and more it becomes more natural. More and more you arrive at the ultimate nature. More and more your mind becomes purified. And more and more your mind gets purified, it affects your being also. The, the way your mind is, or where your, when you really, the whole point of the thing is not about just meditating when you meditate on your cushion, but in everyday life. Integration. Integration. You need to impact on everyday life the way you are. As I drink this, this is meditation. In fact, it is said that as long as you're not distracted, you're mindful and aware, then whatever you do is meditation. Great master said. In fact, there's a famous story about Zen master. 
when the student asked him, Master, how do you practice enlightenment every day life? The master said, by eating and by sleeping. The student said, but master, everybody sleeps, everybody eats. Whereupon the master said, but everybody doesn't eat when they eat. Everybody doesn't sleep when they sleep. From their famous Zen saying comes, I eat when I eat. I sleep when I sleep. You're completely in the action, 100%. That's it. And almost like 100% there, but without I, without the ego, without the grasping. Just pure action, pure being, pure eating, pure drinking. Not X, X, X. Pure, pure, pure whatever you do. Even maybe the movements, meditation. Everything. Dujun Mishra used to say, leave the seeing in the seeing, leave the hearing in the hearing, leave the thinking in the thinking. Leave them in this natural state. In the spacious. When we remain that what happens, then something deep thing happens. Like it's like you go beyond the clouds reach the sky like nature mind, and out of that shines forth this extraordinary sun with the tremendous light of wisdom and the warmth of love and compassion. Deep with them, from that the love and compassion goes. More and more integrate in that, in your, not only your meditation, but in everyday life, in every action. That's what the great master say, never, never separate every life with your meditation. Trouble is, if you separate every day with your meditation, you just stay in a practice, then what happens? I'm practicing, you start to practice, and then like from upstairs to your neighbor or your wife or somebody you know, flushes the toilet and you can scream saying, I'm meditating, can you keep quiet? And then you know, like, you become very tense about it. You separate. But whereas if you just take it as just every day, then whatever, even flushing is meditation. Even noise is meditation. When the noise comes, that, that becomes an object of meditation. Every thought becomes meditation. When you use thought as meditation, what happens? Thought. It's like when you are thought as meditation, it's like the best experience is that moment you watch thought as your meditation, the thought dissolves. That's the best experience. The next best is that if you watch your thoughts as a meditation, you meditate on thoughts, what happens suddenly? It's like watching a movie or a television. When you watch a movie television, there are a lot of things going on on the screen, but you're not in the movie, isn't it? It's like when you start watching meditation that you'll be a little bit separated from your thought that brings that space. The world needs space, inner space, inner freedom. Clear? And very much integrating that in everyday life. In fact, more and more when you practice, what happens? The grasping dissolves. Grasping mind dissolves. It's like, you know, that you can still think, perceive things, they're no longer grasping enter into the perception. It bit like I use the example of, you know, a non stick pants. You fry egg, you think it doesn't stick, it's like your mind becomes non stick. You can view all kinds of things, but they no longer stick. There's a space between you and you begin to see things as more like illusory as you realize more. So in the meditation there are two kinds of meditations. In Tibetan and Buddhism, the first meditation is called Shamatha and Vipassana. Shamatha is the first. Shamatha is kind of practice of calm abiding. It's mainly a practice of mindfulness, awareness. There are two kinds of shamathas. Shamatha with support and with an object like Focusing on the breath, 
on the image even thought because Buddha realized that the root of our cause of a problem is distraction. So the antidote to distraction is mindfulness. They taught the practice of mindfulness. Like when you have the mindfulness practice, focus on the breath, for example. I use very much the image of Guru Mbache, looks like me. You don't put 100% on concentrate. Because if you do 100% on mindfulness, then you know. Uh, for example, there's Buddha's main disciple called Ananda. He had a disciple called Shona. He started meditating. He concentrated too much. He got a headache. Then he was told to relax. He relaxed too much. Fell asleep. So when he was brought to Buddha, asked for advice, Buddha said, well, he was a musician. He said, what kind of, he was a veena player. He said, what kind of string, what kind of thing brought the best sound? Then he said, neither too taut nor too loose. Same with the mind. You understand? So therefore, when you meditate, only 15% focus on the mindfulness, on the breath. Very much spaciously. And then another 15% on awareness. Because if there's no awareness or vigilance, because you may be mindful, but you've just fallen asleep, you may be daydreaming, you don't know. So they have 15% is an awareness that oversees whether you're mindful or whether you're practicing or not. Keeps a check, a guard. But then left with 50%. 50% is left abiding spaciously. As the great Zen master Suzuki Roshi said, the way to control cow or sheep is to give a big grazing field. So you give your mind space, 50% budding, spacious deep with 15% mindfulness and 15% awareness. And as you go, continue to practice, the whole point of this meditation first is to overcome distraction. You understand? Bring mind together, bring stability. Meditation is very good for bringing stability. If you practice regularly, it will bring more stability in your mind. In fact, bring stability, as in, in one of the teachings, the Dalai Lama Kiva said, it, it, it strengthens your mind so that mind, your mind becomes more conducive to virtue. Then the main thing is after a little while, what happens that you see then just Distractions, you know, like the mind becomes more distraction dissolved. The whole point of the essence of this meditation is the state of non distraction. When you're able to remain in the state of non distraction, then you not, don't have to focus on the breath. You understand? Or focus on the object, because that's only a skillful means. Once you're able to arrive at the state of non distraction, then meditation. It's called shamatha without support. You're free of the objects, free of the technique. Instead, you remain in the state of non-distraction while you're mindful and aware, and then whatever you do is meditation. You got it? Whatever. That's the best meditation. Whatever you, every day, whatever you do is meditation. But you have to be in the state of non-distraction. And it's good to do that before beginning that you need to do a formal practice because then that will bring your mind to the state of non-distraction. Then every day what you do is you remain while not being distracted, remain in the state of you know, non-distraction. Then whatever you do while walking, while sleeping, while walking, becomes meditation. Is that clear? I thought that would be helpful. But then as you continue to do this practice called karma body, as you begin to do slowly, slowly, the grasping tendencies begin to dissolve. Because the root cause of all our suffering is grasping. Grasping especially at the false view of yourself, which is the ego. Ego is the root of all our suffering. Hence, therefore, remedy is thinking of others. Cherishing others instead of cherishing yourself. Then finally, also through the remedy of realizing both self and all phenomena are empty of nature, 
then you become free and be liberated. That's I'm going to whole Buddhist part of, you know. Then as your mind becomes free of grasping, then as your mind becomes free of grasping, then you arrive at what is called begin of the glimpse of the vipassana. Where you reach the where there's no grasping entering into perception. That's the kind of what's called dame to The wisdom that realizes the egolessness. It gradually dawns. And then from this, the mind is therefore pure fibra and we are deeper inside. Then into then you slowly then you come to the nature mind. From there to the nature mind. Samatha, Vipassana and the nature mind. These are actually very, very precious teachings I'm sharing with you.